Hello friends, welcome to my channel World of Physical Chemistry. In this video, we are going to discuss the types of macroscopic properties that is extensive properties and intensive properties with the suitable examples. Thermodynamics deals with the matter in terms of bulk behavior that is the behavior which is arises due to the large number of chemical species. The properties of the system which arises from bulk behavior of matter are called as microscopic properties. For example, temperature, pressure, volume, density, refractive index, surface tension, viscosity, heat capacity, molar heat capacity, melting point, boiling point are common examples of microscopic properties. We can classify this microscopic properties into two categories on the basis of amount of the substance present in that particular system. As extensive property, it is the first category and number two, intensive properties. Let us discuss one by one. What do you mean by the extensive properties? That is the microscopic properties which depend on the total quantity of the matter present in the system. It is called as the extensive properties. That is simply, we are concerned with how much amount of the substance or matter present in that particular system. That properties we call as the extensive properties. Examples of extensive properties are mass, number of moles, volume, enthalpy, entropy, internal energy, gives free energy, heat capacity. These are some examples of extensive properties. Now, if a given set of microscopic properties is given and we are to identify it is extensive property or intensive property, then students confuse and it is not easy to remember each and every property. It is extensive or it is intensive. This remember simple trick to identification of a extensive or intensive properties. What is that trick? That is, we define the term extensive properties nothing but the properties which depend on the total quantity of the matter present in the system. Okay. In other words, we can say that if we divide the system at that time, the property associated with that system is also divided. Then we call as it is an extensive property. For example, if in a one beaker, for example, if in one beaker, if you take, if we take particular mass that is 18 gram of water we have taken okay it is our system that is 18 gram of water in a beaker is a system when we divide this system that is if we transfer that water into another beaker that is we exactly transfer now 9 gram of water into another beaker that is we divide the system at that time this property that is the mass also divided therefore it is the extensive property that is the content of this system particularly in which 18 gram of water is present in the beaker is depend on this total amount of the matter present in this system and if we divide that system at that time the property associated with that system is also divided. That is here if we transfer exactly half mass that is 9 gram at that time we call as it is the extensive properties. Therefore mass is the extensive properties. Another property number of moles that is if you take one mole of water in a particular beaker and if we transfer into another beaker that is if we transfer 0.5 moles 
that is when we divide this system at that time the property associated with this system also divided why because it depends on the total content of the matter present in the system therefore number of moles is also extensive property similarly the same concept we can utilize for the volume enthalpy entropy and all remaining examples of extensive properties the dear students remember in particular definition we define extensive properties as the properties which depend on the total quantity of the matter present in the system in other words we can say that extensive properties are nothing but when we divide a system at the time the properties which associated with that system is also divided why because it concerned with the total amount of the substance present in that system and therefore we can say that that property is nothing but the extensive properties now let us discuss another category of macroscopic properties that is intensive properties it is exactly opposite to that of extensive properties how to define the microscopic properties which do not depend on the total quantity of the matter present in the system is called as the intensive properties that is simply we can say that the microscopic properties which do not depend on the total amount total quantity of the substance or matter present in the system it is called as the intensive properties examples temperature pressure concentration melting point boiling point surface tension refractive index viscosity vapor pressure dielectric constant molar heat capacity these are the examples of intensive properties as earlier we discuss in extensive properties here we can also apply the same trick for the identification of intensive properties okay that is we have to divide the system and if we divide the system we have to find out the property associated with that system it is divided it is changes or not okay for example if in a beaker if in one beaker if you take Hundred ml of water. Okay, and say so that the temperature of that water is near about thirty-two degree Celsius. Okay, and if you take, if you divide that same. it is in another beaker if we transfer 50 ml from that 100 ml then what will be the temperature definitely it is 32 degree celsius that is after dividing dividing this system the property associated with property is associated with the system temperature if we divide that system at the time there is no change is observed property is not divided associated with that system temperature remains same okay therefore temperature is the intensive property same concept we can apply for pressure also concentration okay now if in a particular beaker if we have 0.1 molar nacl solution it is say it is 50 ml okay that is in a particular beaker we have taken 0.1 molar nacl with the capacity of 50 ml this is our system if we divide that system that is we transfer from this beaker a 25 ml of same concentrated solution into that at the time what will be the concentration definitely it is same 0.1 molar that is 
if we divide that system at that time the property that is the concentration does not divide it it remains same therefore it is intensive property the why this is so because it do not depend on the total quantity it does not depend on this quantity 50 ml therefore it is 0.1 molar similarly melting point or boiling point if you take water 100 ml 200 ml 50 ml and from all this different volume of sample water if we measure the boiling point definitely for all the three cases it is definitely 100 degree celsius that is it does not depend on the quantity okay therefore it is intensive properties all the same concept we can utilize for remaining properties that is surface tension refractive index and so on this is all about for intensive properties when we concern with extensive and intensive properties we have to remember two important notes the first one the ratio of two extensive properties becomes intensive in nature for example density is the ratio of mass and volume as in earlier discussion we know that mass and volume both are extensive properties if we take the ratio of this mass and volume we obtain intensive property that is density so remember the ratio of two extensive properties becomes intensive in nature second important note heat capacity is extensive property but molar heat capacity is intensive properties that is heat capacity is depend on total amount of the matter present in the system why molar heat capacity do not depend on the total quantity of the matter present in the system this is all about for extensive and intensive properties